and welcome to What's in the Night Sky for May 2021. I'm Hayley and this month I'm going to be talking to you about the planet Mercury, the Eta Aquarid meteor shower, the constellation of Aquarius and the brightest and biggest supermoon of 2021. So let's start by taking a look at the planet Mercury. So I'm just going to move us around to the northwestern part of the sky and I'm going to take us to around the time of sunset. So we'll say around 8.45 and the sun should be setting. And you can see that if I zoom in, the planet Venus is has already popped out. So if we go back a little bit to around half past eight, so the sun will be setting around half past eight. And you can just see how Venus begins to pop out of the evening twilight. And then if you keep going, the fainter Mercury begins to um, become visible as well as that sun is going down and the sky is getting darker. Uh, so if you've got a nice clear um, western, northwestern horizon, then you should be able to see the planet Venus. Um, and then if you wait wait for the sky to get a bit darker look above it and you'll be able to spot the planet mercury um, and then venus will set quite soon and mercury a little bit after that um, mercury is well placed for observing this month so if you've never seen mercury before this is a good time to do it so go outside have a look half an hour 45 minutes after the sun has set and see if you can see it um it's brightest at the start of the month. It will get harder to see towards the end of the month. If you do have a small telescope, um, you can have a go at looking at the planet through the telescope. And you can see here that Mercury shows a phase. So on the 1st of May, we've got a gibbous phase of Mercury. Um, if you want to catch the phase with your telescope then you're going to need something that isn't too small so um, 70 millimeter aperture or larger really would be needed the larger the better to be able to pick out this phase of mercury you can also have a go at the phase of um, venus as well and the phase of mercury as you go through the month will um, change so if i just take us through a few days you can see that the phase is getting um, smaller it's waning towards a crescent phase as we get nearer to the end of the month um, and let's go back to the first venus and go to venus i'm just going to take it a bit earlier so i can get venus um, if we zoom in and look at Venus's phase, so Venus it will be showing an almost full phase all month um, through May. So you can have a go at Venus with your telescope as well if you have it. Um, there are a couple of options to see Mercury with other objects in the night sky as well this month. So the first of those is on the 4th. So I'm just going to take us through to the 4th. And go a little bit later let's get the sky a little bit darker so um it's a trade-off here with um how low the planet mercury is getting and how dark the sky is getting you want the sky to be as dark as possible but you still want to be able to see the planet um before it sets and if i train my binoculars on mercury so this is the 4th of may um so we're about 20 past nine in the evening Put my binoculars on and you can see that the planet mercury is very close to the pleiades star cluster also known as the seven sisters the pleiades will be really hard to spot um, because the sky still isn't that dark so a little challenge for you is to first of all see if you can find mercury which isn't a trivial thing to try and do it can be hard to pick out mercury and then if you can pick out mercury and you have a pair of binoculars handy you can have a go to see whether you can spot the pleiades as well um, this is a view through a pair of 10 by 50 binoculars so this is roughly what you um, would see 10 by 50 are my favorite binoculars for observing in astronomy because they're um they're heavy duty enough that you get a good 
um, good magnification and um, they enable you to get a, a really good view of the sky without being too heavy so that you can hold them steady. If it, I, I feel if you go any bigger than that, then they, they get too heavy. You need to put them on a tripod. Um, so sticking with Mercury, if we go, let's take that off. If we go all the way to the 28th of May, and you can see that Venus and Mercury are very close on the 28th of May after sunset. Obviously, as the month goes on, the um, nights are getting lighter. So you're going to need to go later to be able to see. Um, so we're almost at 10 p.m. now. Uh, so the 28th of May, we're nearly at 10 p.m. And let's put the binocular view on again. There we go. So you can see Mercury and Venus very close on the 28th. Um, and there's also an opportunity to see the Moon and Mercury and Venus as well on the 13th. So I'm going backwards again now, back to the 13th. Um, so here we go. We've got um, Mercury and a thin, very thin crescent moon there. Um, and to see Venus, we're probably going to have to take it a little bit earlier because um, Venus will have set. There it is. So um, I have some very unhelpful trees in my uh, view here. Hopefully you'll have something a little bit clearer. So we've got mo the moon, thin crescent moon, Mercury and Venus all forming a triangle um, just after sunset on the 13th. Since we've got the moon already up, um, let's talk about the moon next. So last month we were continuing our little tour of the phases of the moon and we got up to day 11. So today I want to talk about um, the moon between day 11 and day 14 after new. Um, new moon in May occurs on the 11th so we're just a couple of days after new here on the 13th which is why it's showing such a thin crescent um, if we go to the 22nd of May um, that will pick us up just about where we were so um, by the time we've got to day 11 we can see that most of the main seas have been uncovered and we've um, we've seen some of the ray craters uncovered as well so we've got the Tycho crater down here um, Copernicus and Kepler ray craters as well um, and we've got the Sea of Crises, Sea of Tranquility, the Apennine mountain range all already uncovered and as we head towards the full moon you can see that um, these craters are now completely uncovered. We've got the Aristarchus crater over here, the brightest feature on the moon. Um, and if we keep going all the way to oops, the uh, 25th, um, I'm just going to take us a little bit later and go into the 26th. So the 26th is the date of full moon in May, um, and that is another super moon so when the moon appears larger and brighter because it is the full moon coincides with the point in the moon's orbit that is when it uh, when it's closest to the earth um, and there are a number of super moons in 2021 um, and the may super moon being the brightest and the biggest so this is your opportunity to catch the best super moon of um of the year in May uh, and you can see now that we've got the whole of the ocean of storms as well um, completely uncovered and uh, so that takes us up to day 14 of our tour of the moon's phases so we went all the way from new moon up to full moon and then of course for um, the next 14 days of the moon cycle you get to see the whole thing in reverse and um, the features slowly disappearing um, as the Terminator takes the um, the Terminator moves across the, the moon and takes it back towards new again. If we go forward a few days to the 31st of May and we want the morning of the 31st of May. So um, here I am about half past two in the morning. You can see the moon has 
waned down to a gibbous phase so we're no longer at full now um, we've got a waning gibbous moon and if I zoom out a little bit you can see that the planet Saturn is quite nearby um, so a nice opportunity to see the moon and Saturn on the morning of the 31st Let's take a look at our constellation of the month for May, which is Aquarius. And I'm just going to take us back to the 6th of the month. And Aquarius seems like an odd choice for constellation of the month because it is only visible right at the end of the night. So it doesn't rise until the early hours of the morning. And you can see here, I'm looking towards the east southeast on the 6th of may and you can see aquarius just starting to peak above the horizon if i go forward by an hour you can see a little bit more of it and if i go forward by another hour you can see most of the constellation but now the sky is beginning to brighten um ready for the sun to rise and the reason i've chosen it despite the fact that it's not visible for most of the night is because there is a meteor shower which peaks on the 6th which is um its radiant is in aquarius so i thought it was a good time to talk about the constellation of aquarius it's not a particularly bright constellation. There are no really bright stars to make it easy for you to pick out. Um, we have got Saturn and Jupiter hanging around quite close to Aquarius this month, so they may help you to find the right sort of region of sky. Um, and if we talk about the constellation first, and then I'll talk about the meteor shower. So let's put the art on. Um, so Aquarius is known as the water bearer. Um, the Greeks linked the constellation to Ganymede, uh, cupbearer to the gods um, and was granted eternal youth. Um, you can see that there is um, a, an asterism um, in Aquarius, which I'm going to take the art off now and I'm going to take the lines off as well, just so I can show you. Um, the asterism that appears in Aquarius, which is handy for the meteor shower. So um, here we go. So the water jar asterism, this little Y-shaped asterism um, called the water jar that appears in Aquarius. And if I put the meteor showers on, you can see that the um, Eta Aquarius meteor shower radiant is right next to this um, water jar asterism in Aquarius so um, there's no need for you to try and pick out this asterism um, to find the meteor shower because that would be really really hard to do and you don't need to be anywhere near that accurate when you're looking for meteors um, you just need to be looking in this general direction um, and then you will have a chance to spot some meteors um, so as always with meteor showers you want to be in an, as dark a location as you can um, and for this particular meteor shower, you want to observe from around half past two until um, the sun is rising. So um, if you are observing um, half past two, half past three, then um, the constellation won't be fully risen, but it will be darker. So you'll have a better chance of spotting meteors against the dark sky. If you wait until later, the constellation will be fully risen, but... Um, the sky will be brighter. So there's a bit of a trade-off there. Um, the meteor shower itself is caused by ha uh, Halley's Comet and um, it has a, a theoretical rate of 55 meteors per hour, but the number of meteors you see will appear significantly lower than that. Um, it's a really short um, viewing window, so um, from around half past two until sunrise. Uh, luckily, the moon is out of the way, um, so the moon isn't going to be washing out your, your field of view this year. Um, and the, the meteor shower itself is active um, from the 19th of April all the way until the 28th of May, but the peak occurs on the 6th. So if you've got um, clear skies on the 6th, that is the best time to look out for these meteors. Let's finish by taking a look at the International Space Station. There are a few opportunities to spot the ISS in May. As always, you can find out when they all are using the Spot the Station website. The one I'm going to show you is on the 11th of May. 
all of the opportunities to see the station in the early part of the month are in the early hours of the morning. Um, this one is from around 2.37. So I'm going to take us to 2.36. And I'm just going to get rid of some of these labels just to make things a bit clearer. Um, so let's just zoom out a bit, look towards the western part of the sky and let's start time moving. And you should see the ISS appear at around 2.37 and there it goes. Um, so you get about five or six minutes to watch the International Space Station track across the night sky before it disappears below the horizon again. So that brings us to the end of our What's in the Night Sky tour for May 2021 and I'll be back again next month to talk to you about what you can see in June.